word that your fascination with, uh, maybe it's my interpretation, but with fertility and parenthood comes from, or motherhood? Well, I mean, it's, it's central to, to human existence and to, um, to society, to how, how society survives and, and develops. Um, and because of that, it um, creates all kinds of uh, interesting dynamics and, and so much stems from it. So uh, the film is not only about fertility. It's not about having, only about having children, uh, but it's about different shapes of, of motherhood and parenthood in general. It's also uh, about the relationship between the individual and, and society, about the control of one's body uh, particularly with with women, uh, women's control of of their own body, um, tradition and how tradition um, affects the individual and and the individual's life and about loyalty. So all of these various um, types of relationships affect or 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 stem from uh, the desire to have children. Um, so it was, it was interesting to explore the intersection of all of this in, in the, um, in that little individual unit called, uh, uh family. I, I, I thought the film was very interesting because it goes through three, three different stories, but they're linked in a way. Could you explain that? Well, um, I like, uh, a fractured narrative. Uh, because it, it keeps you on your toes. It sort of, um, it, it gives uh, opportunities to play with how a story is composed and how a story also is composed in the mind of the viewer. So in, in this case, uh, there are three seemingly separate stories, but then they, they connect they connect uh, not necessarily on a narrative level where even though there's that too, um, there's there, there, there are uh, narrative strands that begin in one story and actually finish in, in the next story. But I was more interested in, in um, echoes and rhymes and contrasts of um, different elements um, and what unifies the, the, the three stories really is the, the theme, the subject of, of motherhood um, and the other, the other things I mentioned earlier, uh, control over one's body, uh, the relationship between the individual and, and society, etc. So the first story takes place uh, is set in, in late medieval times in Macedonia. It's in sort of undetermined period, even though we knew we were working with the 16th century, but actually life didn't change much in Macedonia. So like whether it was 18th, 19th century, or whether it was 8th century, it was, it was, life was almost the same. And the other two stories are in, in contemporary Skopje. It's, it's, it's a, it's the capital. It's it's a city of uh, about seven hundred fifty thousand people, dense and and dirty and intense, and and people go on with their lives the way they would in in pretty much any city anywhere in the world. So I like the the the, the contrast, but also the echo and the similarities between the two different uh, eras and and the, and the different uh, places. Um, um. There are beautiful close-ups that I think they're very important for the narrative. Uh, could you comment a little on the need for close-ups in a story like that, or why did you choose some extra, you know? Well, I mean, um, for me, writing is the fun part. And, and directing is just finding the right way to, uh, to complete the storytelling process, to... to um, um, to find the right emotional uh, tone for for each narrative sentence or each narrative chapter, 
And so close-ups are part of that that storytelling technique. Um, yeah, there 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 are quite a few beautiful close-ups because we had great actors. So then it's like you you sort of want to emphasize that you want it to be to be there because uh, the truth in their performance, the truth on their face was so was so powerful that you wanted it clean and clear and and big there on the screen. Um, but actually we played with the full keyboard. You know, there's some like beautiful, big, open, wide vistas, both in the city and especially in, in, the, in the medieval story. Um, and also big jumbo close-ups where you like really go, go in tight. The cinematographer was Tamas Dobosz, um, a young Hungarian um, uh, maestro. So it was good. It was real good. Hey, how important is it for you the, uh, the the award season? I mean, we will be showcasing your your movie or this interview in a special about the Oscars. So, uh, do you ever think about Oscars or award seasons, or or you're a little, or you just do your films and? I did my share of awards, you know, <laughs> um, with the first film I, I, I directed uh, was nominated and, uh, and got the Golden Lion in Venice and won like another 30 awards. And I've, I've won awards since as well. And, you know, I mean, it's nice to be recognized, but it's by no means essential for the, for the work. And if you, if you, um, if you keep thinking about the awards, especially while you're making the film, I think you compromise your work because then you start calculating and that's, that's really bad for art. You know, I mean, your dialogue needs to be with the work itself and the work knows when you're faking it. And it's like you, you just need to be really honest and, and sacrifice if necessary and, and have your dialogue with your art. And everything else, if it falls in place, it's nice. Um, you know, at this stage, it really doesn't change that much in how I feel about my work. Obviously, it makes a big difference for, uh, for, for, for the distribution and for how many people are going to see the work. And the financial aspect and how easy it is to finance the next film. But at its core, you know, it's, it's just a, a peripheral thing. It's like, you know, the, I don't want to say who cares, but it's almost who cares. Who, but what was the impact of uh, Before the Rain in your career as a filmmaker and a writer? Oh, well, I mean, it, it, it threw me for for a for a loop for a, an incredible loop it was like a, a train had hit me because overnight i was um you know recognized for what um i was making for for my my work uh before then i was like you know i pretty much didn't exist as 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 a um as a known filmmaker so all of a sudden it was, you know, I was like completely unknown. And two months later, I'm, I've made a film that's on the New York Times list of 1000 best films ever made. So now uh, how do you justify that? <laughs> so it was like a, a train hit me. And then it, it took me a while to, to regain my balance. And now you, you, you're cool about it. <laughs> I would like to think so. <laughs> And uh, how did you choose the casting for, I mean, the actresses and actors are really cool in this film in Willow. Uh, was it they're, a process of you knew who you wanted? Or? They're incredibly good. I mean, I feel, I feel fantastic about this, this, uh, these actors, every single one of them, including the, the five-year-old boy and the, and the, 85 year old uh, retired actress Radka Radmanovic. Um, it was a long process. I always do that, you know, work very closely with the casting director, um, where we we go, we look for people who are uh, for actors whose whose craft is really good. So I don't care so much about the the looks. It's it's the craft. 
and in order to see a what their craft is like and then b whether these actors are right for these particular roles we go through a long casting process in this case it took about four or five months we had like i think six or seven rounds um two of the of the leads are um first timers they're newcomers basically they've they've never really been in a in a feature film before um so then you know i mean you you just like zero in on um on the performance on on the craft on the dedication on whether actors hear what you want to to say and then we do we do rehearsals and that's really important so usually it's about three weeks per per film so we sit down we do it like the old school way just reading at the table. First, it's everybody sits around the table. Uh, we go through the whole script and then go scene by scene where we, you know, spend a few hours on, on each scene where you just, just read it, don't act, just read it, then talk about it, then start acting. By then the actors know the script really well because they've gone through a long casting process. So it's not like we're starting from, from zero, from scratch. So except for for two of the uh, two parts in the entire film, um, everybody else went through this casting process. Um, and then when, when you're rehearsing, you, um, you really find the nuances. If something needs to be changed in, the, changed in the script, you change it then rather than on the set. If you need to improvise, you improvise then. But then you, uh, you take the improvisation and put it in the script. So it, becomes part of the document. So when you when you go to to shoot, um, you're ready. It's, um, I, I keep saying how I, I like what Bergman said that uh, rehearsal is creation and uh, uh, filming is recreation. So you've you've created what you wanted to see emotionally, especially in a particular scene, and then a good actor should be able to put that in a jar and save it, put it aside for couple of weeks for a month until until it's time to shoot it. And uh, Milchio, my last question now, what was the impact of the pandemic in the distribution of the film? For some people, uh, this kind of films got more audience now because we're all like uh, eager to, to watch things at home. We, we don't, you know. Well, it, it, it cut us off in, 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 in the middle, you know, it, it took our, uh, we were we were mid stride when the pandemic happened. The film had just opened in Macedonia. It, it was it broke all the it broke records uh, in theatrical distribution, and then uh, we had deals to to go on, and then everything stopped. Uh, there were festivals like we were we were gonna uh, we were going to Cinequest. Cinequest played the first week, and then we were gonna screen in the second week. Then the festival stopped. And it was like six, seven months later, it picked up. And now we were, again, at the festival, but uh, not not in theaters anymore. And we actually, we won the festival. Um, so it basically it slowed us down. It didn't didn't kill the film, but it slowed it down because now it's, it's picking up on various platforms and even in theaters. It, it just opened in, in Hungary um, two weeks ago and... Uh, we have a couple of other other nice distribution um, deals set up, including the U.S., um, which should, you know, happen over the next whatever weeks and months. So yeah, the pandemic was was a, was a, a big kink, but you know, life goes on. <laughs>